Peloton is a valuable name that's going to sell media all day, um, plus the stock market, right, which is going to pump it. So I try and step back and look at the bigger trends as opposed to the day to day. And there are bigger trends that, you know, I thought I was confident in that have changed. So for example, I thought they were always going to be a premium provider of hardware. They, they messaged that, right, their kind of best, better strategy or whatever they called it. And then they got very reactive and got into price wars and started lowering prices. And, and it went from like, in my mind, this boom tread plus thing where it was like, whoa, you know, nobody has anything like this to cheaper bike, lower price tread, weights they're pushing, shoes. And now, you know, the guide at $250, just a little add on. So that's where I don't even know. That's the big trend that I see. It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, <laughs> episode 256. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Hi. Hi. I'm still trying to fix my camera. I see that. I'm not center, and that irritates me. Are you centered now? I feel like Olivia Amato does with her little ponytail. I have a ponytail, and so I'm going to have to like do this the whole time so you know that I have hair. <laughs> That's what she does in all her pictures with ponytails. Ah, I thought you were going to say I was like... One of the yoga instructors. Are you centered? <laughs> Are you centered? I know you're not. No. <laughs> I am not. Most assuredly not. So um, uh, I guess we should start by saying John Mills won't be with us this week. He's traveling yes. to visit family. Yes. So I hope he has a good time. Definitely. And he will return next week. And he'll be all refreshed. Yes. And ready to uh, be feisty with us. Yes. That's we, my hope. We like feistiness. We do. And... Um, uh, also, just some house cleaning. Uh, don't forget, we have our Olive in June masterclass coming up. Uh, people have been signing up for that. Yes. And it is May 21st, Saturday, May 21st at uh, either 11 or 12 Central. I can't remember. Uh, it changed several times, but it's happening. And you created an event and it's in the group. Yes. And so people can go over there and RSVP so they can get yeah, notifications and, and all that. You have to sign up for the Olive in June link. So even if you just go and like click going, not good enough, you right. need to go into the olive and june link so they know you're coming there you so. go and we also included that in the newsletter so uh yet another reason to sign up for our newsletter at theclipout.com yes and uh we also have another event that we pulled the trigger on yeah so uh, yes we're doing this we are doing this a uh, night out with the clip out so if anybody <laughs> wants to come to st louis to hang out i know you don't i get it <laughs> we're trying to sweeten the deal so uh we know that there's a huge contingent of yacht rock fans mm -hmm. out there and so uh uh, if you want to come and hang out and we'll figure out something fun to do during the day. But in the evening, we have a, a suite set aside for up to like 28 people. And it's for a show called Sail On, an evening of Yacht Rock Classics. You get to see all in one show, uh, Firefall, who sang You Are the Woman and Cinderella. And I mean, they've got a ton of hits. And then I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. Orleans, who sang Dance With Me and Still the One. And Pablo, baby, Cru come back. That's, That's my favorite. We haven't got there yet. I'm already Calm there. Down. Uh, <laughs> and then Pablo Cruz, who's saying, "What you gonna do?" And which, and I, I don't know where you live. Pablo Cruz, I don't, I couldn't tell you last time I played St. Louis. So I that's, live with you, hon. Yeah, that's where so I live. that's it's been a while since they've played here, anyway. And then Walter Egan, who sang "Magnet and Steel," and Peter Beckett from Player, who baby, sang. Come back. <laughs> I was trying to cue you up. Oh, sorry. Who sang? Baby, come back. Okay, that's enough or we'll have to pay for it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and he was also on a soap opera and all the ladies think he's dreamy. Dreamy. He's like a, a poor man's Rick Springfield. I would be okay with that. I don't know. I mean, he was on a soap opera and he had a big hit song and, you know. Yeah. So Rick so Springfield I, had more than one hit song. But, well, yeah. focus. I think sorry. this will be fun. Yeah. I think it'll be fun. Totally. And it'll be just like, just 
just fun yeah. yeah we're just gonna go and and listen to a bunch of great music and uh so for the sweet tickets it's 95 dollars no 90 dollars yeah and then and that includes your food and beverage it's not yeah. unlimited don't go crazy but like but yeah it, once it's but gone there's it's a gone. there's a food and beverage package associated with that so there'll be drinks and and whatnot you can have a chicken tender with me and then uh and then there's going to be like we have an extra section too so if you like the first 28 people get to be in the suite uh, yeah. and you have to be paid so like it doesn't count if you say i want to go the only way that it counts is if you, you actually send pay. Some, some money so yeah. if we do fill up we still have we have room for some some more and, and some other capacities yeah so, so uh, anyway you can also find that at the group for the clip out and we'll have information about that in this week's newsletter as well mm-hmm. so uh what pray tell do you have in store for people baby come back um <laughs> i'm sailing away i hear that um well we're gonna we're gonna talk homecoming okay uh, we're gonna talk about the upcoming earnings call we're gonna talk about a, an article that is going around and getting all kinds of traction sure. um loving a company that doesn't love you back okay. um and then uh the the instructors have been everywhere so we got to talk about that um dr jen stops by and she talks about how to delegate chores to find time for exercise. And then um, we also had a visit from Angelo and he talks about maintaining consistency when everyone in your house eats like a Tom. (laughs) Um, And uh, so we discuss all of that plus just news just all kinds of news okay well before we get to all that shameless plugs don't forget we're available on apple Podcasts, spotify google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts you can find us while you're there be sure and rate us yeah that'd be nice leave us a nice little review Uh, you can also follow us so you never miss an episode if you want to stay up on to date on things throughout the week like the activities we were just discussing, you can join the Facebook group. Well, you can start by going to our page, facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there, like the page, then join the group. And you can also sign up for our newsletter at the where we will pester you. Yes. Ever so infrequently, <laughs> or generally weekly. It's just once a week. Yeah. We like to we like to send our our digest of all the articles we discuss. Totally. And uh, you can do that at theclipout.com. And finally, don't forget, you can watch all of these episodes at youtube.com slash theclipout. So there's all that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? We shall. Peloton in the news. So Homecoming has been officially announced. Well... It, the the lineup has been announced. Okay. Homecoming itself had already been okay. announced, but but yes, lineup we knew is the here. Dates. Now we know the deal. Yes, and so for those of you who have not been paying attention that closely because mm-hmm. you're not obsessed like I am, <laughs> uh, it is two they days. They don't need to be obsessed. That's because right. Because they have you. I'll do it for you. Yes. Um, it is two days this year versus three days. Um, so the interesting thing is people are really confused. If it's only two days, why are we starting on Friday? Why are we starting on Friday? Oh. Here's here's my theory. Okay. Um, because in Australia, it's Saturday and Sunday. So if they uh. started on Saturday and Sunday, it would be Sunday and Monday, which would be even weirder. Interesting. So just a theory. Uh, I have no idea that if that's sense. accurate. Yeah. And then if you scroll down, we've got the uh, the lineup that we can discuss. So 10 a.m. Eastern, the keynote. She doesn't say that when we're off the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the keynote starts off the pulse of Peloton. So it's interesting because it does not say who's leading the keynote. Doesn't say who's going to be doing this at all. Yeah. So is it going to be Foley? Is it going to be Barry? Somebody else? We don't know. Uh, so, yeah. That'll be interesting. Um, they're going to be recapping highlights, but also they're going to be talking about things, special announcements, i.e. the rower. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, the power of we coming up at noon, and that's going to have Robin Arzan, Leanne Hainsby, and special guests. Okay. And then there's also, this is new, DJ John Michael is going to be featured. He's never been featured. Well, I guess, the, was he, he a full-time employee last time or was yeah. he still freelance? No, I couldn't he remember was exactly full-time. when that happened. He was full-time, but he's going to be on a panel. Okay. Um, and uh, they're going to talk about like what goes into creating scenic rides and runs, how do they create their new podcast episodes, and the story behind Lane Break. So okay. that'll be good. Then we have uh, the warm-up 
So this is going to be um, talking about the artist series, live DJ classes, and that's going to be Daniel McKenna, Marcel Dinkins, and special guests. Uh, then on Saturday, there's going to be Love for the German Community, and then keep on going. We've got Love for the UK Community. You can see a theme here. Yes. Love for the Spanish-speaking community. Yeah, you can see where we're going. And then there's going to be a Get to Know Guide. Uh, that's going to take place on Saturday, and it's going to be uh, looking at how they're changing up the strength training with the guide. That's going to be Callie and Andy. Uh, then there's a conversation on mental health with, uh, of course, Kendall uh, and Sam Yo. I mean, you had to know that was coming. Yeah, she talks about that a lot. Yeah, that's her big thing. And also Dr. Pooja is going to be there as well. Um, and she's one of the... Um, people on their advisory board uh and then of course they have the playlist that they have people put together which they do that every year yeah. so um and then of course you can add your photo to the 2022 photo mosaic um so lots you can do over there now i want to point out that i have had more than one person say to me oh my god x instructor is not included please stop with the drama it's fine um <laughs> all of these say with special guests my guess is that the instructors will be showing up as the special guests. So it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's, and it's also a way for them to uh, not necessarily lock into a certain instructor. They're very busy these days. And mm -hmm. that way, if someone shows up, great. And if not, they didn't promise you a certain person. Yeah. Interesting, though. I thought this was very interesting. You know what they did not do this year? What's that? All the, the little meetups. Remember the little fun five minute meetups? Remember the guy that did all the planks last year? The burpees. Yeah. It was the burpee challenge guy. He was everywhere. Yeah. And um and that was so much fun. Uh, I'm really surprised they're not doing that because people really really love yeah, that. Yeah. People seem to dig it. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of like chat roulette, for, but for Peloton. It was. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun. So I thought that was interesting. They didn't have. Um. So other questions people have asked me. If you want your questions answered for any of these panels, submit them now. There is a live Live chat they hardly ever answer the actual question so if you want your questions answered the best way to do it is to go ahead and submit early okay that is my homecoming information done yeah. So the earnings call has been announced, or the next earnings call? Correct, correct. And Hopefully it's, it's actually an earnings call. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it appears to be. But it, it's it's interesting that the only time they've had a morning call was when they sadly got rid of a bunch of people. Um, so now they're moving this earnings call to the morning. So this one will be on Tuesday morning. Um, I just May thought that 10th. was interesting. Yeah, Tuesday, May 10th. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I don't know. I will, You would... I wouldn't I would wouldn't think that that's in the cards, right? Like they've already I don't think so. I, I've <laughs> it's not heard like mornings nothing, mean people get the axe. I've heard nothing to make me think that. I just I find it interesting that that they're making that shift. I've had people say that it's probably because it's best practice to do before the market's open for the day. Gotcha. Um, then I'm like, well, then why weren't they always doing best practice? Right. Uh, and then other people said, oh, it's because they have new leadership. I, I don't know. So I think it's because. Uncle Barry has an early bedtime. Oh, that. Yeah, I think. I think you're onto something there, Tom. He's like, I don't want to stay up past five. That's <laughs> be home. In he's bed, probably in. he probably gets up. I mean, we know that he's an early riser because he always did the power zone challenges early in the morning. So. Yeah. This is like he, this is like two o'clock in the afternoon for him. Exactly. Yeah. I really think that's what we got going on. So there was an article making the rounds uh, that people have had lots of opinions on. It's from a Substack, and uh, the Substack is from Anne Helen, but the, the, she had turned over her Substack this week to a uh, to a guest writer by the name of Wendy Robinson, and it's all about uh, loving a company that doesn't know how to love you back and. She is fat. Her words. Yeah. Her like words, I, I not ours. I feel weird saying that. Like, yeah. I'm calling her a name. Yeah. And, uh, Feels awkward. Um, but that was her. I, th I guess it's like queer. Like, when I was growing up, queer was like a slur. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it, it stopped being that. And, and they, they took it back. They took it back. Which, which is, is great. Which is great. But I still feel weird saying it I sometimes. I do, too. Right? And so, um, but uh, she just writes all about Peloton and how they interact with the fat community. Yeah. And she feels really um, uncomfortable with the fact that they don't talk about weight, which I find interesting because Peloton has always purposely not talked about weight. Right. Um, the, the goal has been that they meet you where you are regardless of weight. Mm -hmm. um, but this person goes on to say, not really, because if it was just that, then they would also have instructors that were larger sized. Um, and 
I don't know if that's true because, I mean, quite frankly, I know this is not a popular thing to say, but I mean, Christine is not. She's taken some heat for has. not fitting the traditional mold of a fitness instructor. And let me be clear. Christine is not fat. And, Correct. And she is in amazing shape and could cook, could kick our ass. <laughs> like, I just want to be very clear about that. But because she does not look the way a supermodel looks, she has taken heat for that. And so I am not sure that Peloton would choose to have instructors, not even just because they don't want to deal with it, but because maybe the instructors don't want to deal with it. It can, I can't even imagine the pressure that yeah. that would feel. But I guess if that's the, the choice of your brand, then you're used to, to that. So Also true. You know, and ultimately it wouldn't be our choice. It would be that instructor's choice. Well, I guess ultimately it's Peloton's choice because they're the ones writing the check. But yeah, like I... You know, I'm of two minds uh, because I, I get on the one hand, you know, Peloton has never talked about their product in relationship to weight loss. It's never, never been what they what their model has been, which is pretty forward thinking, because if you look at most other fitness brands, they still talk about it in mm -hmm. that in that regard. And and so on the one hand, it's forward thinking. But on the other hand, it's it's also similar to how people's views are on race have evolved over time. Like it used to be like, I don't see color. And it's like, well now we're like, well that's kind of ridiculous. Right. Right. Like of, of course you see color. And so it's not about pretending like there are no differences. It's about trying to, to accommodate and acknowledge differences. So I, I mean, I, but I also get it's It's probably difficult to stop down in every class and address every different permutation of differences that are out there. Like here's what to do with the bike. If you're really tall or here's what to do with it. If you're really short or here's what to do with it. If you're missing your right leg versus your left leg or I, you know, like, I mean, down that road lies madness as well. Also true. Although I will say that the author also addressed that by saying, you know, you could have a series of videos that, that address those, those modifications one time. You, would, you, you wouldn't yeah, have to do it. On your YouTube channel. And, and, and that is fair as well. Yeah. I, I think that it is probably very difficult to be a company the size of Peloton and try to think about how you're affecting everyone all the time. I mean, sure. I think about conversations we've had going all the way back when we interviewed Kristen Fleshner. Uh, gosh, was that she was like episode 101. So it's been a long time yeah. ago. But, um, you know, she talked about all the modifications that Peloton could do to make it more comfortable for people that didn't have sight um, or that uh, were deaf or um, a myriad of other things that that Peloton could look at. So all of that needs to be taken into consideration. Then you have people who are large enough that maybe like maybe they can't get all the way down on the floor because because their their breasts get in the way or their right. stomach gets in the way. Um, and so how do you make modifications for people that that are dealing with those issues? And I don't know, maybe Peloton is already looking at these things. And, and I think the biggest thing that I that I thought was interesting, and I've noticed this, uh, a Peloton still is not great about selling the larger sizes of clothes. Like they 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 used to have a very small variety, right? right? And then there was a time that they were involved with one of it was actually one of the Peloton members had a had a clothing line that they did, and that they had expanded sizes. They worked together with um, with I think it was. Mm. Was it, Rochelle. Miami, was it Miami Fitwear? It was. It yeah. was. And that was Raquel. And then Rochelle Martin also worked with uh, Raquel, I think, that, and they worked with Peloton to, like, get those those sizes expanded. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they still have expanded sizes, but you don't see as many of them and you don't see as many options. So and it just kind of quietly went away. They just quietly stopped using Miami Fitwear, probably because they were getting ready to do their own. Right. Line. It's just the rest of us didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think that it must be very difficult to think about all of those things all the time that's what i'm trying to say yeah I, I would think so and i i would end by saying that ultimately peloton is a multi-billion dollar global conglomerate and uh they don't love any of us back yeah and, and now that is you know? true that is <laughs> like, an, that is an the, excellent point the, the end of the day they're about generate revenue like and and that, i don't even mean that as a character flaw but mm -mm. like peloton is not a living breathing human being and, nope. I, and it's a brand that has inspired a lot of passion i mean this is, the existence of this show is is proof of the passion that is in, it is inspired but 
Yeah, but even look how like that has has evolved over time. I mean, yeah. and I don't I don't just mean the show. I mean our relationship with Peloton. Like even that's different. And yeah. now since there's, you know, a bunch of knockoffs, there's there like Peloton can't even they can't even there's there's so many people to interact with they can't even interact with everyone they want to interact with right. whether it be a clothing brand or a third party software or or a podcast like there's just there's too many of us trying to do things with them and it's just it there's too many it's a lot yeah so that's all evolved yeah they care about us but they don't love us <laughs> <laughs> no company loves you no i love disney i they, promise they you they don't love you back disney doesn't give two <laughs> about me they don't yeah and that's okay. Yeah. They're a company. Right. CG Mag Online has a review of Peloton Lane Break. Yeah, which I love. I continue to be a proponent of mm-hmm. uh, Lane Break. I still think it's tons of fun. There's new classes dropping. As a matter of fact, there's a bunch of rock classes that dropped this week. Now, they don't count towards your Rock 22 challenge, but... I challenge you to go try them because they are so much fun. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this article goes on to say that not only is Lane Break a lot of fun, but they think that everything's going to be gamified regardless across the board, yeah. not just fitness, but in every industry. And I think that's true because it's what engages us. <laughs> it's like how now everything has Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I, it's, I feel like now it's going to be like you have to play Tetris for your toast <laughs> to to. To, to cook and i will <laughs> i won't that's too much work i'll go buy an old toaster <laughs> for now <laughs> bicycling.com has an article about um mark nevin yeah and how he discovered peloton and then that helped get him hooked on cycling and he lost 80 pounds and now he loves bike riding i love this article because this this is kind of my original journey with peloton not Mm -hmm. the losing 80 pounds and i don't want to take away from what he did because he lost 80 pounds and that's freaking amazing but the the getting involved into a sport that that like you never thought you could get in involved in like that's just so cool like yeah. he he went from riding a bike to riding outdoors and and there's a lot of people in the peloton community that do that uh you know join the road riders group if you you don't believe me or if you just want to have somebody help spend your money but um that <laughs> they will get you to buy a bike they is will. what she means you yeah. will absolutely buy an outdoor bike whether you ride it or not you will get one <laughs> um and uh i just think it's really cool that not only did he get healthy but also found a whole new sport and a whole new community i mean to me that is what peloton is all about and i could read these stories all day they make me so happy getting the psychological edge with dr jen joining us once again via the magic of zoom tube it's dr jen man licensed marriage family and child therapist and sports psychology consultant uh, you may know her from vh1's couples therapy with dr jen or vh1's family therapy with dr jen she also has an app called the no more diets app so you might want to check that out as well ladies and gentlemen and all points in between it's dr jen hello hello <laughs> thank you for coming back uh We have another question for you. This one is from Colleen Kaiser. She starts her new full-time job. Uh, It was tomorrow when she wrote this. So um, she was a substitute nurse and now she is a staff. So first of all, congratulations, Colleen. Um, She plans to work out in the morning before work as she does not have to be in until 8 a.m. But she needs to learn. She wants to plan on how to delegate some chores to her family uh, so that it fits into her new schedule. What kind of advice do you have for her? Well, I think it's important, first of all, that uh, all of the chores are age appropriate and that they are things that you have seen that your children have some sense of mastery over, that you're not giving them um, a new a, a new chore that they have not demonstrated that they can do. And then while you're on your bike, expecting them to know how to do that. Um, so then secondly, I also would recommend looking at kind of the time element of that, like looking at what time do they have to leave for school? How long do I estimate that this chore will take them? Adding in some cushion in case things go wrong. Um, and I, I would also want to involve the kids in the choosing of the chores. So maybe you make a list of all of the chores and say, you know, there may be sometimes it's, it's easy. Sometimes it's like, oh, I love like of all the chores. This is really like I love to organize. So I'll put away all the plates. 
are like, oh, I like, I like picking up heavy things. So I'm going to take out the trash. So you may have some kids that are just like, this, this is my chore of choice. Or you may sometimes have kids who are fighting over chores, in which case what I recommend doing is rotating, like have a list of the chores you and put it someplace where everyone can see so that there aren't any fights about, no, this is my chore. No, you did that last week. Put it up where everyone can see this week. Bobby does this chore, Susie does this chore, Jane does this chore, and then it rotates the following week. But make sure that the communication is clear. Make sure that everyone knows who is doing what and that you leave enough time. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I like that. I like the rotating especially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're a project manager and you like to manage things. I was like, rotating? That sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's way more work. But if you have kids who all want to do the same chore, you're going to end up with more fights and conflict. And also you want to be fair. Absolutely. It can. And, and, you know, sometimes it's the opposite problem where everybody fights over the chores they don't want to do. And so that's, that's a good way to handle it as well. Exactly. And how do you get the kids buy-in on something like that? I mean, look, look, there are some families where the kids just naturally like, okay, that sounds fair. Like, let's do it. And then there are other families where the kids are not used to doing chores. And then in which case you may need a little motivation, you know, Hey, like when, Everyone has completed one week of this and it's gone smoothly. We will plan a family outing or like who like we will, um, you know, we will get a pool raft or, you know, like whatever it is, like something that the whole family can use together and be excited about. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking about our kids because they just bitch about everything. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, I guess... <laughs> in our house it would just be like rock band <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome well uh i know that was a short one but thank yeah. you so much for the advice and uh until next time where can people find you um you can find me on all social media at dr jen man two ends on jen two ends on man and all my peloton workouts on my insta stories and also every week in Style Magazine, Hump Day with Dr. Jen, I have a weekly column about sex and relationships. Wonderful. Thank you. Instructors in the news. So Daniel McKenna has a mysterious injury. Boy, oh boy, does he. We don't know what happened. And he's not saying. He just said he had a wee injury outside of work that set him back for a few weeks. Uh, and uh, he is wearing a sling. Or a cast, can't tell, don't know. We're very glad that he is uh, healing. Yes, and then he's doing his best to get back to the uh, the members as quickly as possible. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we find out exactly what happened. I know. I'm always like, what if he hmm. fell off the bike? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he fell off the bike, but I do. I just want to. I want to jokingly, jokingly spread uh, a little rumor. Um, the other day I was taking one of his classes yeah, and uh, it was a new class and it was for the guide and he was, um, it was a strength class and he was talking about how he went into this, this Starbucks and he ordered his coffee and um, he was waiting for it to be done. And then this woman walked in and apparently it was the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen in his entire life. Yeah. And he was just like totally staring at her like, <laughs> like, legit staring at her so she so, caught him and broke his arm so then so then his order got called and he didn't even hear it because he was so busy staring at her he didn't even notice so the woman turns around and is like is that yours and he's just like totally got caught staring like, totally. <laughs> so you do have to wonder because the injury started not very long after that Interesting. I, maybe she had a boyfriend or yeah. or a very strong athletic girlfriend yeah yeah i don't know maybe the barista got tired of waiting that could have been there's so many yes. things that could have happened there jokingly starting a rumor <laughs> <laughs> i don't really think the two are connected fyi <laughs> So, yeah, Tune Day, the book is coming out May 3rd. She's been talking about her tour. Just wanted to mention she has a new stop on the tour. It was New York and L.A. And now there's a third one in Tyson's Galleria uh, that she is going to. And uh, I believe it's the day of the actual drop. So oh. very cool for people there. And I think there's also now a virtual event that she is doing where she will be book signing virtually. And you can join. Anybody in the country can join. Anybody in the world can join. So 
So uh, Jess Sims was on Good Day New York. She was. Yeah, they posted over in the You Get To crew, um, but she was on the local Fox channel and uh, she was she was showing off Peloton and did a workout with them and uh, definitely got their their glazed donut look on. So she she did a good job representing. <laughs> what, what Peloton. What does that mean? You don't know the glazed donut? No. That's like a little sweaty. That's like your warm-up sweaty. She jokes about that. Oh, and I see. And she also loves donuts. So it's a whole thing. Gotcha. It's a whole thing. Okay. It was a whole different thing in my head. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <I was> like, <laughs> there's another part of the internet where that means something very different. All righty. So <laughs> just moving like, right along. What the f- are we talking about? <laughs> oh, my word. I didn't even know. <laughs> so speaking of uh jess sims yes uh okay so she ran the, the boston marathon last weekend right uh-huh. and people had no idea she was running until she showed up and did it and it got posted on social media i had a lot of people reach out to me and they were honestly kind of upset that jess sims did not share her journey uh, i felt that it was because of the fear uh jess sims had never run more than eight miles in her entire life right um and also people were a little i don't know the right word to use they but, felt a certain type of way about her being in the marathon at all right yeah Some because people. it's so difficult, it's so difficult to get, to get, into get the in Boston that marathon. just kind of felt like someone handed it to her and yeah. there was obviously a larger backstory that Maybe people didn't know at the time. Yeah. And yeah. um, and so a lot of people have been like, why isn't she talking about it? Why hasn't she? So this week she did a recap and she answered a lot of those questions. She answered, why did she keep it a secret? She answered how it came to be in the first place. And I thought that she did a very, very good job answering those questions. Um, for example, the reason that she kept it a secret was because she wanted to keep the why in the focus it was for her and it was for michelle and michelle was she was a victim of the the bombing that occurred there at the boston marathon five years ago six, five six years something yeah. Like that. yeah and so she was there and michelle is the one that gave her her bib to jess offered that up to her because she wanted to thank jess for inspiring her and helping her with her recovery over the years and so jess had been working on kind of she has all these wonderful things going for her, but she wanted to kind of do something that was outside of her comfort zone. It's something that she was working with a life coach on. She wanted to do something outside of her comfort zone. This opportunity popped into her inbox literally on December 13th. And it just seemed clear. This is what she should do. And um, I'm not trying to tell her story for her. You should go and listen to this Instagram live. It is saved out there on her profile. She's going to do another part of it uh, later this week. And uh, it's just, it's really cool. And it's really cool to hear how all of the instructors really supported her. Uh, She mentioned that she immediately told Bex Gentry and Bex gave her a whole bunch of ideas, uh, like for how to do her training. She talked about how Matt Wilbur supported her and Kirsten, of course, Kirsten, Kirsten was like, as soon as Kirsten heard, she was like, I am going with you that day. I will be there. I will do all of the things. And she had a class to teach. She literally got on a flight from Boston to go back to New York to teach that night. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's friendship. And that is what this that's what the community is about. So very, very cool. A website called We Are Me Too, I think is how you say that. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but it's in Span. It's it's a Spanish website, I believe. It's M-I-T-U. Mm-hmm. So people are probably like why can't you know how to say me too right like it's, yeah it's like it's, site yeah. spelling right because yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh features camilla ramon and how, talking about how to uh silence their inner inner tia toxica yeah which i heard is ant toxic <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea if i'm correct in my spanish because i know about this much but uh but i think I, it could mean that but i think it's just a, it's also a lady's name yeah so and it also could just be their inner toxic voice so right. and i don't know what the slang for that is but Regardless, it is awesome to see some of our newer instructors, especially those that aren't here in and that that aren't teaching English classes all the time. Right. um, Get recognition. So I think that it's very, very cool that we're seeing more and more of this. And uh, it it also it's great advice about how to give yourself a little grace when it comes to your body image. So check out the article because it's really well written. So Cody Rigsby was at the NAB show. Any idea what that is? I believe it's National Association of Broadcasters. Oh, 
Well, yeah, Cody was there. And talking about, uh, it says where content comes to life. That makes sense. So it's all, I th- and I think, uh, I think this might be their end of more dealing with the digital streaming world as opposed to traditional broadcasting. Gotcha. And I think we actually talked that he was going to be there a couple we weeks have, ago, yeah. but, but he was there and he posted some pictures on his Instagram. So if you had any interest in that and you didn't get to go locally, then you can see a little bit of the uh, behind the scenes highlights if you would like pretty cool yeah hannah corbin sat down with the spruce.com to talk about her uh secret skill yeah and uh, i posted this and man people are very critical of design um but anyway (laughs) i'm not gonna i'm not gonna linger on that i i thought this was really cool because um i have noticed that she has been like designing she's been working on her cabin and she's been her cabin in the cat skills and she's been pretty public about that but she has not shown a lot of her house i did not know they were two different places first of all so she has like a town home in the new york area and then she has a, a a cabin that she bought with her husband um, a while back, I want to say it was like two years ago in the Catskills and they've been working on remodeling that. So this article focuses more on her townhome and it shows some of the amazing artwork and she talks about how they're two totally different styles and um, and that she's happy about that and that she loves that. Also, people have brought up about a million times that in the article, there is a talk of a paint uh, of, of, of a painting of a and it's like seven feet tall or something like that and okay. unfortunately it's not in the article and lots of people wish that it were because they're really curious how that could even like manifest itself on a wall yeah. and like work in that space there's a lot of question about that maybe it's in the bathroom i don't know i don't know i used to work at a radio station and there was autographed items everywhere yeah and in the bathroom w- was all the bands they didn't like oh interesting <laughs> Did that change from time to time? Uh, I didn't work there very long. Oh, okay. So I don't know. <laughs> I just remember they had Nickelback in there. Oh, yeah. Very trendy. Nickelback literally gets shit on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I get you. But anyway, congrats to Hannah Corbin. Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. I like seeing the inside lives of the instructors. Totally. So Mariana Fernandez uh, went to Puerto Rico yes. to film some new scenic content. She did. Yeah. So uh, and, and it's and it's now up. So it's like you, you're able to go see it now. And I had a bunch of people from the Pelo Latinos page and group send this to me. So thank you guys for sending this to me and making sure I saw it. Yes. Don't worry. I am not going to miss this opportunity to highlight her amazing work. But she did an, uh, a scenic run and a scenic ride. Um, so that's pretty cool because there are no other runs with her on the uh, platform. Oh, so okay. that's pretty cool. Yeah. And just being able to see like the behind the scenes that she posted on Instagram of like going to Puerto Rico, seeing people that she knew yeah, doing all of that. Plus of course the actual filming behind the scenes. Very cool. So if you haven't gotten to check that out, I highly recommend you do. And of course take the scenic classes. That's lots of fun. You can get a PR in PR. You can, you can. You could do it every time if you work really, really hard. <laughs> Look at that rainbow. Wow. Oh. And a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken looked delicious. <laughs> Marcel Dinkins was part of the USO Women's Empowerment Summit panel. She was. And uh, that took place on April 26th. If you did not get to check it out, there was some info about that on her Instagram. I also find it interesting that um, it was just... Last week, I think yeah. that uh, Alex Toussaint was doing something with the USO as well. So yeah. uh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if there's some kind of partnership, like larger partnership behind the scenes mm-hmm. that maybe hasn't been announced as a thing, but there's a relationship there now. Exactly. I think that's pretty cool. Either way, congrats to Marcel. And we have an instructor celebrating their first Peloton anniversary. Yes, Kira Michelle. She is our Australian yoga instructor. And uh, by the way, I took a class with her this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was her, her pop punk yoga class, which I was not sure how it would go. I actually really enjoyed it. Lots of good, lots of good tunes. Uh, did not think that they could do um, some of the cl- some of the songs that that worked out there, and I can't think of any names of anything, so I suck at that. But <laughs> it was a good class, and congrats to Kira. That is really really cool. The clip out, clip out, clip out, clip out. Clip out. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube, it's Angelo from MetPro here to answer all of your nutrition questions. Hello. 
Hi. Hey guys, thanks for having me back. No problem. Uh, this is a this is a tricky one because we've got two individuals both struggling with a similar issue. Shirley yeah. Augustin, uh, she her struggle is that all three people in her family eat different things and it drives her nuts. Uh, and then Rebecca Ulip, her husband does not care about being healthy, eating clean, counting macros. So basically a Tom. <laughs> um, and it's just the two of them. And he, but he does most of the cooking because she works long hours. So it's almost impossible for Rebecca to be consistent and it's really hard to do alone. Help. (laughs) That is a great question. And I love how you, Crystal, were able to ask it and throw Tom under the bus at the same time. I am very talented. She's a multitasker. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I remember when we first moved in together, you were frustrated because everybody wanted to eat something different. And my advice was (laughs) let them. Let them. Yeah. 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 It's not the Waltons. (laughs) Well, so... So that, you know, unfortunately for for, for Shirley and everyone asking questions, the reality is Tom is correct. I've been doing this. Thank you for joining us. I think that's all we need for this segment. It pretty much. I don't know if we ever need to have you back on the show again. You cannot top that. (laughs) That's it. Uh, Tom answered it all for us. Tom's correct. Uh, Well. So. The, the the truth is that uh, when you have people with different eating habits, you can ask nicely, you can ask aggressively, you can <laughs> beg, you can plead. But at the end of the day, any changes they make, if it's not from within, experience has taught me that it will be temporary. So you have to do this for for you. Um, I, I've had a number of conversations where I've had a client and uh, his spouse or, or, you know, her spouse decided to jump on board with them to support them. And that's always a great thing. And by the way, that does work really well because there's, there's unity and goal and alignment and it is a huge boon to success. That being said, I always have the conversation that, you know, how your spouse or your family or, or someone else in your household does on a consistent meal plan cannot be the deciding factor for you. Because what will happen is that it's going to build resentment. Uh, so you, you will fall off your diet. I know this because everyone <laughs> falls off their diet. How do? How is your spouse going to feel if they follow a meal plan just to support you and they follow it for weeks or months just to support you and then you fall off the meal plan? Oh. See, it just, <laughs> it, it doesn't go well. Yeah. So um, she's but, but mad it, right now and we're not even, that's not even <laughs> what we're doing. And she's mad about it. <laughs> it's stressing me out hearing she's, about it. <laughs> she's the one that gets mad about dream cheating, right? Like, yeah, if, everyone does. If son, she that has is not a dream just me. that I cheated, I am in trouble. Yeah, and you I'm should like, not be cheating I in there. I didn't even do anything, not even in my own head, and I'm getting yelled at. Angela's like, this just got uncomfortable. Yeah, so you get to have those thoughts. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, with, with now, there's the practical side when you're in a household with people. People, oftentimes it's not a big deal to have an overarching theme and say, hey, you know, I'm really trying to do this. Uh, could I'm going to follow this whole meal plan and diet. I don't expect you to eat everything with me. But oh, by the way, Rocky Road is my favorite ice cream. Could we not bring that in the house? I think that's a very reasonable conversation to have. And I think most people are willing to make some compromises for their friends, family, people they care about. And so those sorts of things, that's good. Have those conversations. Have the conversations of, I know you're not doing this, but I appreciate support me because this is important to me. I'm doing this for my health or I'm doing this for another reason or whatever the case may be. It's important to me. Therefore, hopefully it'll be important to people who are close to me. That said, at the end of the day, it has to be something you're doing for yourself and it can't be dependent on others, but it can still be practical. So we have lots of moms that cook also for kids and say, well, my kid is eating this and I'm trying to eat that. And oh, my husband and vice versa, husband's doing this and it's a different deal. The nice thing that from a practical aspect that we tell people is we teach them to cook by macro. 
So instead of following a specific, here's a recipe I'm eating and it's different and everybody needs a different recipe. No, just cook in bulk macros. You know, maybe you're cooking some protein for dinner, whether it's plant-based or, or uh, meat protein, say you're doing some grilled chicken or you're doing some fish or you're doing some veggie burgers, whatever it is, you've got your protein for the dinner. Now you're going to do a carb or you're going to do a starch. Well, maybe you're doing some, some rice or some potatoes or some, you know, whatever it could be. And then you're going to cook some veggies or you're going to make a salad or something along those lines. That's really easy to compartmentalize and say, well, I'm going to do the protein and the veggies and have only this carb or I'm not having a carb or whatever the case may be, but the family wants to have pizza also, or wants to have this, that, or the other, the protein, the veggies are still good. Maybe they will want to indulge in the same carbohydrate you're having, but if you can make it modular, you can kind of mix and match. So certain members of the family, you don't have to cook in a completely different meal, but rather just swap out certain bulk macros. And that really has a scale of economy that works well for families that want to have different things. So if you learn to cook in bulk macro, that's one of the first things we teach our clients. It'll not only save you time, but it makes the diet modular in a way that you can mix and match with family members who aren't eating the exact same things. Mm -hmm. There will be some spillover where you can eat some similar items from the list. I love that. That's yeah. a really good way to do it's it. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if people want nutritional advice tailored to their lifestyles, where can they find you? Metpro.co slash TCO. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Peloton Artist Collaborations. There is now a Peloton uh, Women of Rock class. Yes, yes, there is. And the classes count toward the Rock 22 challenge. So you can absolutely take those. Um, and I know that one of the two for one classes was with um, Susie Chan and Jocelyn Thompson Rule. They did a two for one and it looked like it was an outdoor run, which I don't know that has ever occurred before. Um, so that might be a first. But at any rate, check out the Women of Rock playlist, the Spotify Women of Rock playlist uh, and all the different classes. Peloton birthdays. And finally, uh, we have one birthday this week, and it is Chelsea Jackson Roberts, who celebrates her birthday on April 30th. Dr. Chelsea. Uh, if you need uh, if you need some time to center yourself, Tom, since you were talking <laughs> about being centered, she is an excellent choice, very soothing. Um, but uh, happy birthday to Dr. Chelsea. Checking in with the Peloton community. Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is David J. Miller, PhD. I'm including the PhD because that ain't cheap. <laughs> you're spot on. You're you, probably you, still paying for that. So I'm I'd be like, for, right? They're gonna let the loans go. Supposedly, we'll see. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd count on that. I would uh, Do that. you, man? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be at Starbucks being like, "That's David, PhD." Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, he is the author of the new book, Sweating Together, How Peloton Built a Billion Dollar Venture, or at least it was billion dollar at the time he wrote the book, uh, and created community <laughs> in a digital world. Uh, hi, Dave. Hi. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Great to be here. Uh, it's so good to have you here. Yeah. This has been uh, quite a road, quite a road. Yeah, you've been working on this for a while. I have been, and uh, like Peloton, there were some bumps in the road along the way, and some yeah. delays, and changes, of course. So, but finally, here we are. Here we are. Uh, do you do you feel uh, comfortable sharing how long the journey's been? Yeah, Is that okay? Absolutely. It's it's just a little over five years oh, since shit. I realized like this topic was real. Uh, just you know, right around when you guys were starting the podcast, 2017, where it was like, whoa, something is happening. And it's still going, right? We're still, I mean, people are already questioning, is it time for part two? So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to go so ahead and say yes. Yes, it it's is. Been, it's been five years of tracking this amazing and, and ongoing story. Wow. He's like, part two, I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so you had pretty good access though, which you probably won't get for part two. That is true. But, <laughs> but 
you had you had good access to the company I, while you were writing this. I did. I mean, as we all know, there were, it was a different era back then. And, right. You know, we, and and we talked about this a little bit, and others have you know the major changes. But back then, they wanted to talk to the media. I think they did want their story to be told because in 2016, when I when we got the bike in 2017, as we all three of us were kind of getting into this. People did not believe in them. They 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 yeah. thought it was a joke, you know, the, the crazy, you know, bike with an iPad. That that was it. And yes. and there's still those people out there. But but so they wanted to tell the story and they wanted to invite me in once they realized I was trying to to really tell their story because of the uniqueness of the venture. Yeah. So you got to interview uh, instructors, you got to interview uh, John, you interviewed other executives at the company. Yes. Uh, there... Tom Cortese. Yeah. Yes. He was a really unique guy. I know you guys have talked to him. Um, you know, great part of the story. Um, and then some people, you know, who are no longer there. Um, and then, uh, you know, probably the most important were members, to be honest. I mean, it, it's great. The talent the people who came up with the big idea and the vision and executed on this beautiful business model um, for a while, they executed on it. And, um, but the members, you know, that's a big part of the story is the subtitle talks about building community in the digital world. Um, that access, and that access to your point probably would not be granted right now um, for me or anybody. I mean, I think they're very wary of anybody with a uh, pencil or a laptop. Or a, mm -hmm. Now they would sell the rights to penguin and it would be a glossy coffee table mm. book and yeah <laughs> that that monetizing anything right now seems to be the the, the state of play for Peloton. Yeah. it is it is definitely different uh so is there as you've gone through this whole process are there moments that that stand out is there like one that stands out above all that like you you want to share i think really Back to the beginning, back to that year, 2017 or 2016, when my my wife bought this bike and I wanted nothing to do with it. I'd mm -hmm. never done indoor cycling. I didn't do boutique fitness. I didn't feel like I was that kind of person. Um, if I stood up, you'd see I'm tall and awkward. Though I want to stand up because I'm wearing my gifted pants. I'm one of the few who got these, these I think they're oh. parachute pants, but they call oh. them track pants. But um, as part of my 15,000 minute gift. Uh -huh. But back in that, era in 2016 or 2017 my wife bought it i wanted nothing to do with it and eventually i tried it because i got sick of the treadmill in the winter and then importantly i looked at the facebook page and that's where i was blown away and that's where i'm still blown away day to day i don't care what the stock price says or the writers at this paper or that outlet have to say people are happy when they engage with Peloton. And that is where the first thing I noticed in early 2017, I went to this Facebook page and people were talking about magic pants, which you all reference in your bumper music still, right? Yeah. <laughs> people still don't the talk about song. that anymore, I don't think. Magic no, I, it's because so many of the OGs don't go to the yeah. the, the the OPP anymore. <laughs> but it's a relic this, of a bygone era. It is. But this kind of idea that anything having to do with Peloton was just magic. And, yes. you know, people with disco lights, and then I found your podcast. And, and so to me, that's still the important thing that just like it said in the IPO, they are selling happiness and, and health and well being and all these things that are still in very short supply in, in modern day life. So I would still say that initial, why are people flying to New York when the whole point is to work out at home, <laughs> like that kind of never made sense until you understand it and then you end up doing it going to visit new york so that to me is still that early impetus and i do check every day i check social media to see are people still kind of deliriously happy or giving their testimonials you know like it's snake oil <laughs> and and you know we we were fortunate enough to uh read an early copy of the book and uh it was it's really good for anybody out there who's wondering like is this worth the read yes because i think especially if you're relatively new to the world of peloton and you and you're wondering like how it got to the critical mass that kind of the vortex that sucked you in here's the backstory you do right? such a good job of capturing that excitement and the 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 whole story the story that's there and and i i would say for people who have been around for a while uh i would say they're they're gonna enjoy it just as much because it is it is with nostalgia that i read those those exciting times um 
the people getting together and at the studio and just especially after we've been through this stupid pandemic that will not end like it's like being able to go back and read about those magic moments like it's it's like you're right there again it just it's wonderful well thank you and and that you know i i tried to capture it and that's kind of the weird thing or how the story evolved that when i first noticed it it was more as an academic like what's this you know weird uh, these strange people and spending money and time and then within a year i was sucked into it and so you the, went native the <laughs> i did and as you know i talk about Can i we went say that still jane, i, I went don't jane know goodall. Tom. <laughs> well, i went jane goodall where there, I we, was, go. there we go there we go yeah that yeah, was yeah. that was always my analogy where like i went from looking at them to grooming the chimps where yeah. i was like in the middle of it up in new york in these sweaty you john foley sign language <laughs> I, I, I did <laughs> I, I learned this from listening to John Mills. Wow. I'm just going to say wow. Just, I, I, that's, it's like the, the, the cough button, the wow button. Like, you, wow. You, don't, you don't know what to say when Tom says something right. like that. Yeah. Wow. See, now you know why I laugh all the time. Right. That's all I got. <laughs> but it really was that transition. And then that played out in the book where I had kind of laid out the business model and then ate it up myself, you know, kind of like getting nervous when I realized, oh my gosh, there's a message from Dennis Morton on my Instagram account and, you know, <laughs> feeling like it's just my heart race. Like what is wrong with me? You know, that kind of something like, that boy, I, I really hope your next book isn't on the opioid crisis. <laughs> That's I, I think someone just wrote that book. Uh, <laughs> there's been a few uh, of those. Yeah. Yeah. There have. Yes. So that was exactly Chris. It was like, I got caught up in it where it went from just like, here's the parts of the business model to, okay, here's how I fell into the business model. Well, I think, you know, we should probably, uh, we should probably stop and say, what, what do you do for a living? I mean, I know, but people listening don't know. So how sure. did you even end up writing this book? <laughs> Absolutely. So at the time I was, you know, a professor and an academic and I was, you know, always wrote on what I thought were, you know, more tangible topics. So my, a lot of my research would, were on student founders. So Facebook and Under Armour and Google. And I just like looking at the world and trying to make sense of it. So that's where the minute I, you know, saw these things going on, on the OPP and all that, I just thought, whoa, this is from an entrepreneurship perspective, interesting. Um, and that was, you know, I was lucky that's kind of my job and I, I like to make it fun. Um, and, you know, they did something interesting, as we all know, it's a little controversial right now, but they merged two traditional business models from fitness. You either join a health club or you buy a piece of equipment and they put them together. So that was, again, early where, you know, my wife said, oh, I bought this thing. And I'm like, well, how much was it? <laughs> and you got to pay monthly. I'm like, okay, they're smart. I don't like these people. They <laughs> disrupted my home, right? With a morning <laughs> argument over money before I've had coffee, <laughs> but, but I also respected them. So that's, that's really, you know, what I do for a living is try and understand how do people create value and then get paid for it. And, and so Peloton, that's where they are right now. They've created all this value and they haven't quite figured out how to get paid for it. Yeah. It's the tricky part of the business model. I'm, yeah. I'm paying and, plenty. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, and right. You're, you're, and that's the funny thing. Like I'm wearing this sweatshirt I just bought. I was traveling and I went to showrooms wherever I was. And I got this great Scottsdale sweatshirt <laughs> with these logos on it of all the cities. And then this Arizona one's highlighted. And I'm like, you know, you do, you do apparel, right. And you make a, a boatload of money because my wife wanted one and we bought my sister one. So there's 210 on sweatshirts. Right. That's a lot of months of membership. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. How, how, how has it been waiting for this book to be ready to go out to the public while simultaneously watching the entire thing you wrote about change again? It, it's fascinating in that, right? It's hard. I mean, even, even, you know, with initially the timeline, right. For those who are newer to the company or just don't track it like the three of us do. Not we thought it was going to, right. Not, <laughs> no, no, right. Exactly. That's where when I say to people, do you know who this person is? And they say, oh, that instructor, Corey. And I think, oh, wow. Corey, I, what? <laughs> oh, I heard that. And like, it's, my favorite instructor is Corey. And I thought, well, <laughs> get out of here. Once or twice a month. I don't Right. It's like, that's quite interesting. So, <laughs> but for us who really have tracked it, the target was the IPO in 2019, because I knew it was going to go public even before it was a unicorn and kind of this, as we all said, we kind of saw it and I, and so we thought, okay, let's do the IPO. 
And then I thought better. I thought, look, well, let's see the IPO and how they do. And then COVID hit. And then it just became like, whoa. And, and COVID even impacted, you know, the logistics of the publishing industry where you couldn't get paper. And then there was a backlog because all the previous year's books, which were delayed. Um, so as we were in the queue, which normally was supposed to be four weeks between delivering and the print, it turned up to be 12 weeks. And then John Foley stepped down or was removed or however we want to call it. And I called the publisher. I said, do we put an appendix in there or what? And they said, well, you can, but then you go to the back of the line. Oh. Oh. And so May 24th would have become, you know, whatever later into the summer. Now, the fortunate thing, which we joked about in the intro is my title's okay. It doesn't say the name of the founder. It doesn't say a yeah. hundred billion dollar company. That's true. You can even recycle it for your next book, right? You could be like fast and furious, like sweating two right. together. <laughs> so, so we dodged a few things to your point as the news played out, there is a chapter I think it's chapter seven or eight called Bumps in the Road, where I had seen, you know, we all kind of could see some stresses, for lack of a better word. And, and I put them in buckets. And, you know, I, I'll just preview, preview, I'd say the biggest bucket, which I knew was going to be a problem, was what I call hubris, where they just thought they could kind of do anything um, and just would react to anything. We can do strength. We can build a factory. We can buy a factory. We can, you know, whatever, whatever your heart's desire. And I kind of knew that. I had gone through the internet rush, which interestingly, a lot of their leadership had as well. If you look at their history, they, they had done the internet rush as well. So, but, but that that's is interesting. You know, the question <laughs> how, right? No, no. And I came of age in that era. That was my first startup as it was for John Foley. He went from Mars to the internet in the, in the mid nineties, just like I did. And so that's made me very trigger shy on capital spend and revenues and, and, but, you know, it's hard when the world's throwing billions of dollars at you yeah. and saying, spend it. It's never so, going to stop. Yeah. And it's, and you know, and so hopefully the principles are there, both the principles of the challenges they ran to, but more broadly, why it, it works so well from the customer and consumer perspective. And if the company can straighten out their end of it, it will be a long lived business. Absolutely. I, I don't, you know, we say all the time and, and I definitely still feel that way. Peloton as a company is not going anywhere. Yeah. Like they are, they are in good hands for a long time. It just, it just is going to look very different than, than the company and, I fell in love with. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. And I'm not a, a financial analyst um, and I watch it, but I always, one thing I've all, I've, it's the acquisition game. I've always watched companies that when they get cheap enough, you can't help but think someone's going to buy them. And, and we're this week, this day, we're in that territory. I don't know where we're going to be in a month. but uh, And so that's the only thing that concerns me is that at some point someone does scoop them up because the shareholders eventually just can't handle. I don't know where it is today, but I've been ahead the whole time until until very recently. I bought I it after I think you're ahead IP. today. Yeah. I, I doubt you're ahead today. It dropped to $21. I'll say this, I'm still ahead. Oh, you must have got in on that that one like two I seconds that it was down at like early, 17. <laughs> it was, you know, it was one of those stocks, you know, it came poorly out of the gate and then got hit and and I bought it when it got hit. And and the truth is I didn't buy that much because my whole future was wrapped up in the book and I thought diversification. So yeah. <laughs> that is smart. <laughs> I so, would yeah, have been so concerned had you. <laughs> buy the book, not the stock. Buy the book, not the stock. <laughs> It's a it's a jump ball as to which is going to be cheaper. <laughs> right now, what are you going to get more value from in the next six months? I'd argue it may be it may be the book. <laughs> it's a jump dong. <laughs> Can you go unnative? How does that work? <laughs> oh, I'm I'm a consumer. I love it. <laughs> I just I just got off the ride. I thought I might see Crystal on the Jen Sherman ride, but she was not. No, there. no, I I I got work, man. I got to work. I hear you. Yeah. I hear um, you. So so what what do you think? Like, but but from a writing perspective, has it been driving you crazy to watch these things play out? Not so much like what was your book cohesive enough? Because I I mean, I've read it and I know that it was, but I mean, like, doesn't it drive you nuts to see these things play out? And you're like, but I need to add, I want to tell everything here. <laughs> yes, yes and no. Peloton is 
a valuable name that's going to sell media all day, um, plus the stock market, right, which is going to pump it. So I try and step back and look at the bigger trends as opposed to the day to day. And there are bigger trends that, you know, I thought I was confident in that have changed. So for example, I thought they were always going to be a premium provider of hardware. They, they message that, right, their kind of best, better strategy or whatever they called it. And then they got very reactive and got into price wars and started lowering prices. And, and it went from like, in my mind, this boom tread plus thing where it was like, whoa, you know, nobody has anything like this to cheaper bike, lower price tread, weights they're pushing, shoes. And now, you know, the guide at $250, just a little add on. So that's where, I don't even know that's the big trend that I see. So even though it's day to day, it's like, whoa, they went from this premium, expensive entry point, aspirational. And I would still argue, which we all would, it was still affordable because you could buy it on time. You could, you could do all kinds of things, use a firm and, and, but it was still premium like an iPhone, but somehow everyone's got an iPhone, right? An right. iPhone's $2,000, but everyone's got one somehow, yep. right? So and they didn't do that. So those are the harder things where it's like going to take some time. And even this CEO, you know, I'm not sure what to, I guess Barry is just what I'll refer to him. I don't have a nickname quite You're yet. You're not going to call him Bear Bear? <laughs> you know, it's hard to make sense because I, I don't even, I can't make sense of it. It's a new thing almost every day, a new, a new experiment, a new pricing model. Um, so that's almost more frustrating that we're at this in, in between where who is, you know, it's like, uh, who is Peloton? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That is who, exactly who, who how I feel. They? Thank you. That is exactly how I feel. <laughs> yep. Right there. So, um, going back to the book, where, where can people find the book? How do they, how do they purchase it? Tell us about so that. The, the book is at all major booksellers. Um, in addition, you can find it at my personal website, David J. Miller, PhD.com, where there will be a special code. Ooh. The clip out that will get you 20% off of the MSRP of the hardcover. So all major booksellers and David J. Miller, PhD.com. Nice. Awesome. And you're going to want to use the spaces on the promo code. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And, that. and that was an interesting thing when, you know, the, the publisher, they, they put it in these massive systems that all the major retailers look through and decide which books they want. And because of the beauty of the internet, everyone could put it on their, their website. So it was funny, even a year ago where I saw it on target and I thought, Whoa, I, I've got a book on target.com and Walmart. <laughs> and so you really can all find it almost anywhere. How exciting. So uh, how many books do you need to sell to get on the bestseller list? We want to, we want to support you, man. <laughs> It's funny. I, I don't even know that answer, but I do know, and this is, I did learn this a little bit. The best sellers really aren't the best sellers. Right. Oh, and, nice. and, and I don't know how it works in the movie business and, and music, um, but they want to get more of a representative. So they will look at regionally. So that's one thing is I guess people can go into their local bookshops. If some of them still exist um, oh. independent bookstores and ask them to get it, it's still about four or five weeks out and they can put orders in. Or um, like we said, just online, they, they have some weird combination where they try and distribute geographically and they look at independence. And then they also, they want to make sure it's all, you know, they're not all business books or pop culture books. So they kind of, I've learned um, there is a little bit of a, a game to it. I tried to avoid that because I think Peloton is going to just, the, the community will keep supporting it, I believe. I think I as believe opposed to- writing a book on a super hot topic and, you know, like a movie release or anything, you have a week to get it done. And if you don't hit that right curve, um, then, then there's a problem though. I would rush out and get it now. <laughs> <laughs> You're sending some mixed signals yes. there. <laughs> beat, beat the Christmas rush. You can't trust the supply chain. Exactly. It sounds like a good, you know, it won't be ready for mother's day, but it will be ready for father's day. And there are a lot of Peloton dads, apparently. Yes there, yes, there are. Yes, there are. So it makes a wonderful July 4th present. Yes. Uh, yes. Celebrate. Absolutely. Celebrate health well-being for, for the 4th of July and whatever they're going to put out this year. On, uh, <laughs> it's a good on Labor Day gift. Russia. Yeah. Arbor yeah. Day. <laughs> Arbor, wow. We're already right back to school gift. Right. Um, there you go. Halloween. I mean, really. Summer solstice. It's a gift for all seasons, yes. I think it is, is what we're saying. 12-month-a-year <laughs> gift. 
<laughs> yeah. Yom Kippur. <laughs> don't want to leave anybody out. Ramadan. Don't That's wanna, right. Get them all in there. I don't think it'll be ready in time for Ramadan, though. Well, there'll be another one. Okay, well, that's true. That's true. There will yeah. be. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And we should probably also uh, remind people before we let you go of your leaderboard name. Yes. I know it's right on the front cover of the book, but they're m- probably not looking at it. Not yet. They haven't gotten it yet. Absolutely. It is uh, Chicago born. And I, as I mentioned, we're on the tread. I'm on the bike. I'm on the mat. I've become kind of a yogi through Peloton. Um <laughs> I'm a little weak on the weights right now. And I, I heard John talking about, I agree with him. It is very shaming to look at that little blue body and realize that little like, guy front and back, little guy front and back. <laughs> right. And, and it's like, and I realized, well, it's not even going to work because the, most of the lower body classes are longer. <laughs> so even then it's going to be imbalanced. Right. So it's like, I'm not going to do a 45 or maybe you're doing it on tonal and some of those things, but like to me, 45 minutes of strength. I don't know, Tom, you could tell me it sounds like a long time. It is. I just did it before we started this. As he was, he and was... I was, I was like, can we cancel? Yeah, that is like, <laughs> I just, I, I'm like lucky to get tens and twenties right now, the 15 minute flashes and things. Yeah. So, so I do have to figure that out, right? If I can hide that body or, or they're just shaming me. <laughs> little guy front and back is mocking you <laughs> yeah I, I definitely have you know this is where you know from interviewing so many people over the years i'm i'm in a real live class trend right now i can't stop and it i don't know strange Hello. i guess i'm still feeling the effects of covid that i want to know there's people out there no, I totally get that. I've just given up on it working with my schedule. <laughs> it is. You know, that's another one of the old days questions of the scheduling. And, and you know, I've, I have always felt even before Europe and Asia, London and Australia is that they have to do a West Coast. They have to have a West they Coast. They have just studio. really pushed away from that. So I don't know. I don't know. We will see. We'll see. Well, Thank you very much for joining us and uh, and and including us in your book. That was very exciting. Yes, it was. And no, th- and thank you. Thank you guys for leading the way and being open and being aggressive with you know your reporting over the years. And even I'll, I guess I will tell the story. So we'll go over. I apologize to the producers. That's okay. I was up in New York interviewing. I can't remember who. It was either an instructor or one of the senior level. And I'm on this what's called the Gold Bus, the business class bus from. New York to DC, which I was taking back and forth quite often. And my, I think it was my Instagram message came through and, and it was clip out of Crystal. And she says, <laughs> are you writing a book on Peloton? And I'm like, what the, what? Like, I knew obviously who you guys were, but I'm like, wait, what? And that's when I realized, wow, they've got people inside the building because like, the, I just walked out of there and I'm just like, it's like someone was watching with binoculars. She's on the box. <laughs> You can message him now. He's off the property. She's good. Um, now, now imagine what it's like to be married to that. <laughs> a lot of control. I have to really be on my game. I've got eyes everywhere. Yes. Live, live 360. Yeah. <laughs> also makes it hard to buy Christmas presents. <laughs> you always that's surprise your, me, honey. Your other phone and credit card. Yes. <laughs> This well, is, this has been fun. Yes, absolutely. It, is, it has been really cool seeing this come to life uh, and just watching your journey from afar. So thank you for letting us be a small part of of, of sharing that with people is really cool. And, and congrats <laughs> on it finally getting released into the wild. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Flip out. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Uh, what pray tell do you have in store for people next week we are going to be speaking with jillian Kerwin, and i'm very excited this has been uh, a long time coming yes yeah, a, a little bit different interview uh she's a little person and she talks about how she and her community interact with peloton yeah yeah, yeah. so it's very very fascinating she is a fascinating cool lady yes so uh until then where can they find you people can find me on facebook at facebook.com slash crystal d o'keefe they can find me on instagram twitter uh and the peloton leaderboard at clip out crystal and you can find me on twitter at roger kubert or on facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. And of course, don't forget our newsletter that you can sign up for at the So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep pedaling and running. Clip in, set the